In August 2024, the FDA updated its booster shot for the messenger RNA COVID-19. The Florida Surgeon General a couple weeks later put forth his own guidelines to this, some of which I agree with, but other parts I do not. Now, I'll also be telling you what I'll be doing for this upcoming season for my own self, so let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. I know it's been a few weeks since I have posted anything to my channel. Um, many of you probably don't know, but I was actually hospitalized with a pneumonia for five days and on oxygen for two additional days when I got home. And I was pretty much a mess. I was short-breathed. I couldn't really do much of anything. I couldn't even hold a normal conversation without coughing or getting short of breath. So thankfully, I'm doing a lot better now. I'm back to working out, back to running, and I pretty much feel back to normal. So uh, yeah, but it was kind of harrowing. And then right after that, of course, here in the Tampa Bay area, we had a storm, a hurricane go by us, and then another one hit the Bay Area. So now I'm hopefully getting our footing back and people's lives are getting back. Of course, anybody who did have any significant loss during the storms, uh, my heart goes out to you. I've seen a lot of destruction. I know there's been a lot of pain, a lot of damage that's been done to people. So know there's people out there that are thinking about you. Now, um, as many of you know, when it comes to vaccines, I've never been one who's advocated for a mandatory vaccine when it comes to COVID. Now, also, I'm one who believes in individual liberty. I believe people should be making their own decisions based upon what's best for them and their families, and that they should use credible information to weigh the pros versus cons, and not just for this, but for any medical decision that they're making. Now, on August 22nd of 2024, that's when the updated version of the messenger RNA vaccine was approved by the FDA, and there was a full approval put forth for anybody over 12. And then for those who are six to, uh, months to 11 years old, it was still considered an emergency authorization. Now, soon after that, the Florida Surgeon General made some very important recommendations that I do agree with. Many of them are really the basis of what my practice is based upon. Things such as the importance of staying physically active, minimizing ultra-processed foods, reducing inflammation, prioritizing vegetables and healthy fats, spending plenty of time outdoors in order to get your vitamin D levels up um, or supporting it with um, supplementation if necessary. Unfortunately, he never went on to say the importance of getting the 25 hydroxy vitamin D level above 50 nanograms per milliliter. And I wish he would have mentioned the importance of getting zinc into range as well, but he didn't. Um, but And it's important to know these are things that are super important to our immune system. But by by making this statement, I, I hope that people do not think that this is going to make people or immune or make sure that they will not get severe disease because there are still people who get severe disease despite all of this. So, you know, so it's a good recommendation in terms of general guidelines, but it's, of course, not nearly close to the whole system um, to the whole situation. Now, one of the things that the Florida Surgeon General um, advised against was the use of messenger RNA vaccines as a whole. OK, now, as you know, I've always taken more of an informed consent approach. What are the potential pros? What are the potential cons in order to make a decision? But he was advising that nobody take the messenger RNA vaccines. And he did advise for seniors if they did seek um, to seek out a non messenger RNA vaccine, which is called Novavax, which I think is actually a good idea. And most major pharmacies are now carrying the Novavax. And I would say consider for any patient who does wish to be vaccinated but does not want to use a messenger RNA vaccine, I think that this is a reasonable alternative out there. It's not for the exact same um, um, variant, the KP2, that the that the newest messenger RNA one, but it is still a, a, a sub-variant that's happened um, after Omicron. And that's one of the things that I think that I, when I read through this, that the Florida Surgeon General got wrong, because he said that the vaccines for this year were, tar were the boosters were targeting the Omicron variant, and he pointed out that um, it's not around anymore. And it's true that it's not around anymore, but it's not true that that's what the vaccine is targeted for. It is actually targeting the KP2 subvariant, which is a in the lineage of Omicron, but it's not the same thing. Um, KP2, KP3, those seem to be the main variants that are around there. So there does seem to be a good match in terms of what's out there. But of course, Another couple months or two, that could be changing as well as to what the, the most common subvariant or variant is. And so, but another thing, and this is something that I pointed out in the past, he went on to say that it doesn't protect against the most current dominant strain. Now, I know I've said this before, this is a pet peeve of mine, 
These are not strains. These are variants. He even quotes um, a, a paper from the CDC stating um, that that states what the what the variants are. It doesn't even mention the word strain. You would think that the Surgeon General of the state of Florida would know the difference between a strain, which is really more you talk about bacteria, versus a variant or subvariant, which is more talked about when it comes to viruses. But you know, I think it's important to get the terminology proper. Okay. Um, but he is um, true. It is true when he said that there's little data to suggest that it offers substantial um, protection because the research hasn't been shown. They're, they're making a hypothesis similar to the flu shot where they try to make an educated guess as to what will work. But in this year's flu shot, um, it's looking like only about 33% effective for that. I realize it's a different vaccine, but, but it's, it's, it, 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 there hasn't been research that shows that this is actually going to work. Um, although if the strain, if the variant matches itself, um, what's out there, then there is good likelihood that it will. Now, one of the things he also states is that the government has failed to provide sufficient data supporting the safety and effectiveness of the of these boosters. And again, that's true because they don't know. Um, but you know, there is also concerns about prolonged circulation about the messenger RNA and the spike protein that's made from the messenger RNA in some people's recipients. We were told originally that it would just be around for a few days and then it would be cleared out of the body. We were also told that it would be kept local. However, there's lots of research that has shown that both the messenger RNA as well as the spike protein from the vaccine is entering the circulation and getting to lots of other body parts besides where it was injected. Now, another thing that he mentioned was an increased risk of autoimmune diseases after the vaccination. And this is true also. Um, there was a study of over 9 million people from Korea, and they did show significant increases of autoimmune diseases, such as lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and for psoriasis. Now, it should be pointed out that in a more homogenous populations such as in Korea, it may not carry over to people who are not of Korean descent or Asian of de uh, Asian descent, but it was a huge study of 9 million people where it did show this issue. Now, also, he says that the messenger RNA vaccines present the risk of subclinical and clinical myocarditis, pericarditis, other va um, con cardiovascular conditions among otherwise healthy individuals. And we know that that was especially true for young adult men. But the thing is this, he does not mention at all that the same thing is true for wild COVID. And in fact, the data that I've seen, and, and I looked this up again, shows that you're more likely to have severe and more, and more commonly to get myocarditis and pericarditis from the wild disease than the vaccine. So again, you can't be cherry picking information. You should present all of the information out there for people to make the best decision and completely leave that piece of information out. While you talk about it for the vaccine, that's poor form. That's not the way a public health care official should be um, behaving, in my opinion. Now, another one of the things that he talks about is POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. And this is something I did a whole video on. There's a link on the, in the show notes just to go back to that if you want to see that that's a, a chronic condition that did seem to be increased in some people who did get the vaccine. Now, also, in, he quotes the study. The link is also in the description. The negative effectiveness four to six months after. And he, so he's saying that people are more likely to get the disease. That's not what I'm seeing. That's not actually what's mentioned in the study. Yes, the effectiveness does wear off within four to six months. It's not providing long-term protection. But it doesn't say that there's negative effectiveness in the study that he's quoting stating that. That's misinformation. Um, he also did fail to show that the same study did show that there was some durable protection for some people against hospitalization and death. So obviously, that was the main concern as opposed to just getting sick, right, hospitalization and death. And then, then the studies still do show that it does help with that. Now, as the efficacy did wane, the studies showed that the vaccinated individuals um, can have an increased risk for um, infection um, in some cases. Um, it does actually say that in one of the studies that I quote. Now, he also talks about the potential for DNA um, integration of messenger RNA into the DNA. And that kind of, again, there's really no research that I've found that shows their significance. There's people who are making reports, nothing that I've seen that's in any kind of um, scientifically validated studies. Um, he's actually quoting a unpublished, undated preprint. And that's not what you make public health care decisions on. I'm sorry, you shouldn't be making personal health care de decisions on that. This needs to be something that is published in a journal that's been peer reviewed. Um, I searched, the studies don't exist from what he's quoting. Um, in addition, um, now here's something interesting. He says that there is unknown risk of potential adverse impacts with each additional dose of the vaccine. 
unknown risk. I guess he could say that for anything, but there's no studies that actually show that to be true. I mean, it's a hypothetical, right? You could be, there's an increased risk for, um, you know, there could be an increased risk for drinking too much water for, for too long. Who don't know? It's, he said it's an unknown risk. Unknown means you don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. All right, so now what's my take on this overall? Now, first of all, it is clear to me that any form of COVID vaccine does not nearly have the same type of benefit that it would have had back in 2020, 2021. And nobody had any protection whatsoever. It did provide protection for people. It wasn't long-term, but it did help. And of course, then once the herd immunity came in, hybrid immunity, that really seemed to be what took care of it for most people. Now he does. Um, now it's also showing that the messenger RNA vaccines um, may provide rather short protection, and that is there's no data whatsoever for this Novavax, this more traditional vaccine that's out there. But one of the things about the Novavax, as I said, is that it does give a specific amount of antigen to the person, not a variable based upon how much one's body makes from the messenger RNA. So um, I don't think that there's been enough research that's been done to look at the side effects of either of them. But I am more concerned of the messenger RNA again because of the variable in terms of the amount of antigen that could be produced. So in terms of what I'm doing, now especially this year, because I did have a whopper of a pneumonia, um, if you look at the x-rays, the CAT scans, or the doctors, the pulmonologists, I mean, when I looked at them, I'm like, oh my God, that's a really bad pneumonia. I haven't seen an x-ray like that in years. So I'm going to be getting the Novavax vaccine. I'm much more comfortable. I've taken the flu vaccine many times, never had a problem with it. Um, it's something that I'm much more comfortable doing. And I'm going to be taking a flu vaccine for the same very reason as well. So I know that there'll be people who will be up in arms because I'm taking a vaccine. And I would just say, you know what? This is about liberty. This is about people making the decision that's best for themselves. And I hope that you do the same for you. Have a nice day.